Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve minimum absolute difference in binary search tree, lead code number 530. So we're given the root of a binary search tree and we need to return the minimum absolute difference between the values of any two different nodes in the tree. Okay, so we're given a binary search tree. We can see it's a BST because for any given node, everything on the left is gonna be smaller than it and anything on the right will be bigger than it. And we want the minimum absolute difference between any two nodes in the tree. There's a few examples of a difference of one. So three minus two will give one and two minus one will give one. And that's definitely gonna be the best we can do. So we'd return that. In this example here, we have a much bigger disparity, but we still have a 49 versus a 48, which gives a one or a one versus a zero gives a one as well. Now for a BST, it's very common to do what's called an in-order traversal. And the reason for that is because it visits the node values for a BST in order. So if you do an in-order traversal, which by the way means you go left first and then you visit your current node and then you do right that means this pattern right here where for this first node which is the root first thing you would do is left okay we go left that pattern is recursive so we're at a new node and so the first thing you do is go left same thing with the seven here we first go left and then that's nothing and so we quickly process that and come back now is the time we actually process this node we're visiting them in order this is the smallest node value which in a b BST is going to be as far left down as possible. So we see the seven and continuing an in-order traversal, we would do the right, but that quickly processes and we go up to the 15. Okay, we process the 15. We then go to the right. Okay, we do the 17. We're going to return back up here and then 24. Then we would do 25. So we could do a standard in-order traversal. Now, why is this actually important? Why are we discussing an in-order traversal? So the reason you'd want to do an in-order traversal is because if you visit the nodes in order, so it basically go in this pattern right here. So we're looking for the smallest difference between any two nodes. It's probably not going to be 24 versus the seven. Like that makes no sense. We're way over here in the right side, and this is way over here in the left side. So if you have them in order, seven, then 15, then 17, then 20, then 24, then 25. See what you have here? Well, if you get your differences, this difference is one, this one is four, this is three, this is two, and this is eight here. So if you get all of these differences, well, you can just get the smallest one, which is going to be one. So that's exactly what we're going to do, except we're going to need kind of this helper global variable, which we're going to call prev, the previous node. First, that's going to be initialized to none, and we're going to keep track of the minimum distance so far. So we'll just call that MD for minimum distance, and generally you would set this to something like infinity, saying a huge distance right now. Okay, then you would look at the root and do an in-order traversal. So we'd go through, we'd go through, and then we start to process the seven. Now, when we see the seven, we want to compute a difference between our current node and our previous node, but we don't have a previous node. So in this case, all we're going to do is update our previous to be seven, and then we can keep this going. So now when we see the 15, okay, we're comparing 15 to our previous node, which is seven. So we can get a 15 minus seven, which is equal to eight. And then we can see that that is better than our minimum distance and so that is going to equal eight okay can we find something better than eight well our previous node is going to get updated to 15 and we'll look at the 17 so we're looking at a 17 minus a old value of 15 that is going to give you a difference of two and that is a smaller minimum distance so we're going to update our minimum distance to be two and our previous value will be updated to 17. you'd compare 20 to 17 and get three that's not any better and you would ultimately get that when your previous value is 24, so this one right here, the last value you'd process is this 25. So you would get your 25 minus your 24, which is equal to one. That is your smallest minimum distance. And at the end, you'd return this value, which is one. Okay, so we can do that in order traversal via an O of N search. And that is also going to take up O of N space due to the recursive call stack. So let's code this up. So we're gonna need our min distance and our pre values to actually be kind of in the global scope. So we're going to make those lists of one value. So min distance is going to be the list of just infinity. So the float of infinity. And then we're going to have prev is our previous value, which just gets initialized to the list of none so far. Okay, we'll do a DFS. So that takes a node and this is going to be an in order traversal. Now, if the node is none, there's really not much to do there. You just want to return in an in order traversal. The first thing you always do is go left. So we go left 
left left as far as we can, we'll eventually hit the smallest value. Now, after we're back from our left search, we want to check if the previous value is not none. So if it's not none, that means that we've already kind of set it to something. It means that we're at like the second value or the third value. It means we're anywhere but that very smallest value. So there's something to get a difference for. So we'll set min distance at zero, of course, equal to the minimum of itself, which is min distance at zero, and the difference, which although we're talking about minimum absolute differences, we know we can actually just force the positive thing here by doing no.val minus the previous, because we know that we're doing an in-order traversal that the previous is going to be less than our current value. We make sure that we see that minimum distance, we keep that going as far as we can, and then after we have done that, we want to make sure that we update our previous, so prev is going to be equal to our current node value. And then we want to go right after that, so DFS on node.write. This is going to do our whole search, as long as we call a DFS on the original root, and we can just return the min distance at zero. So this is going to go through and get the smallest distance possible by comparing all of those adjacent elements. And this is going to work in a time complexity of big O of n, where n is the number of nodes in the tree, and the space complexity will also be big O of n due to the recursive call stack. So if we submit that, that is going to work, and I hope that was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.